Pinfish on the menu for today. These are kind of small, but they will do. And I think I'm gonna anal hook them. I'm gonna run them through there. And that is our setup. This one's a one ounce with a number three aught uh, circle hook. We'll try over here first. Want to try to get always get in the shaded areas playing with it you're waiting for that solid run there it goes there it goes oh you just there it goes there it is pull them off that wreck there ah oh, jack All right, let's get this guy up Okay, so let's talk about baits. Uh, these are all basic baits that can be store-bought, frozen. Um, like all my videos, I prefer live bait or at least live, fresh, frozen bait rather than store-bought, but sometimes you can only do with what you can do. Uh, starting off, I push this a lot, but for beginning fishermen, the bridges especially, uh, anytime you're anchoring up on the reef it's just a big keys type of uh almost a mandatory mandatory part of it which is the chum and what you basically would have is a chum bag this is just some leftover stuff but you can kind of see it's just a mesh bag half inch mesh bags and then this is the block chum that you'd get um you can buy a just a plain mesh bag probably around four dollars there are different mesh sizes, so you want to make sure that you do get a larger size. Uh, the smaller size means less of it will flow out, which is good for um, lasting a long time or for uh, catching bait like pinfish or whatever, where you just want to get the scent and the oils and just little particles out. But to keep the fish's attention, especially the bigger snappers and bigger fish, you want the bigger chunks to be floating out to really attract them and, and keep their attention. Uh, next is the actual chum. And this is bionic bait. This is some of the cheaper stuff you can buy, but I buy it by the case. And it's just a block of frozen menhaden chum. And you'd put that inside the block and it would just slowly uh, defrost and particles would come off. Uh, I get these for about $6 each when I buy it by the case of six. Um, so it basically comes out, well actually five bucks. I get a case of six for $30 at West Marine. Um, I think you can probably buy the individuals between 6 to 8 and then 8 to 12 if you get the, like the tournament brand. After that, um, really key, very, very important because you're looking at an outlay of about 8 to 10 bucks. This is reusable. You just put it in a Ziploc bag and freeze it and just keep using it. Um, but if you want to catch fish or if you're not catching fish and you're kind of frustrated, this will get you get the fish to you. That's what the key is. It'll attract all the fish to you, which will make it a lot easier to catch them. I also use it for prospecting, which is uh, I'll walk down the bridges, hit the different pylons, shake some bait out, and then you can see everything will come up to it and start running over to see uh, where it's all the commotion's about. And then you can see what uh, fish is there and what sizes. But like I said, what that does is starts a feeding frenzy. Then the next bait is shrimp. Good old, basically frozen shrimp. 100% better is live shrimp, but a lot more expensive, plus you have to maintain it. Um, shrimp is probably the most favorite food of all the fishes. Everything will eat it. But that's a good thing and a bad thing, okay? Good thing is, is that you'll get tons of bite on this stuff. The bad thing is, is that it's gonna be from 
everything out there which is going to include little pinfish, little grunts, all the little nibbler fish and they're going to be constantly just pecking, pecking, pecking at your hook and not even give a chance for a larger fish to get at it. And then you've got all the snappers from all the different sizes. So if you're looking to catch that 10, 11, 12, 13 and bigger, it's really hard to catch them on shrimp based on the fact that everything else will eat them before they get a chance to do it. It's, that's why sometimes I say it's a too good of a bait. Um, the other negative about it is that it's a very soft bait and it'll pull off the hook very easily. Uh, if you fish shrimp, you know that you're just constantly rehooking it because they get peck, 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 and it's gone. Uh, snappers especially could just grab hold of it, yank it off the hook, and you might not even know it. Uh, the other part of it is, is it stinks and it doesn't hold very well. Once you defrost it, don't keep it. It's just rancid. It's just horrible. Um, my golden rule is, is use the bait that you would eat. Now this is frozen. Now as it's defrosting, I wouldn't hesitate to probably throw it in a frying pan and eat it. Especially if I caught it, froze it, defrosted it, I would definitely have no problems of eating it. But would you catch it, freeze it, defrost it, freeze it, defrost it, let it sit out in the sun, freeze it, and then eat it? No, it, it just rank and stinks and nasty. So I usually just do these things once in a day. I don't even buy shrimp, to be honest with you. I bought this one just because I wanted to do this video. But if you want to catch a lot of itty bitty fish, just have a lot of action, quick and easy, shrimp is fine. Um, it is good for the sport fish, bone fish, shrimp is the way to go. Even permit, it's a secondary. But my negatives overwhelm it, so I just don't use shrimp. Then the uh, next one, which is that falls into that similar too good of a bait, a um, little bit too popular, is the uh, squid. And good old popular box of squid. I think uh, I paid $2.19 for this, the shrimp, and I paid $3 for a pound of squid. Um, almost similar to the shrimp in, in that it's a great bait. Everything likes it. Um, but it is a little bit better because it'll stay on the hook a little bit better. A little bit better. Everything will, especially the toothy critters, will just take chunks out of it, chunks out of it, until it's either gone or something pulls it off. Um, again, I don't really buy it. I usually buy it once every three to six months and I use it as a, a squid roll. And then I basically take each one of these out, individually wrap them in a saran wrap, freeze them, and I'll take one little brick out when I want to catch a live ballyhoo on a hook and line when I go out to the reef. Um, and then I'll just use a little tiny uh, gold hook, little piece of squid, and then just catch them uh, one at a time so that they're lively. Um, realistically, I could cut this in third and that's all I would use on each trip that I go out because I'm not using very much. One tentacle is probably enough because it stays on the hook fairly well. Um, but that's the positive. Everything likes squid. Uh, same negatives. You could use it once, then it'll start stinking and rancid. Uh, yeah, I bought this. I think this is my last roll, so, but like I said, this will last probably three to six months. But that's the squid. Then we start moving up to the little bit better baits that I like. Then this is a ballyhoo with the beak. I just caught these on uh, one of my trips out to the reef and I just didn't use them, so I freeze them and I use them for a cut bait on the bridges. What's really good about these is that you could chunk them, not only that they like it a lot, the small baits don't tend to mess with it as much. They'll hit it, but the small snappers, all the sm uh, snappers love it. Um, yellowtails, muttons, all the mangroves, everything really loves ballyhoo. But uh, you can cut, cut it into steaks. So it's a very easy uh, bait to uh, prepare. Just cut it into little chunks or even larger chunks if you're going for bigger fish. Um, like I said, the snappers just love ballyhoo. And then the... Um, the only negatives is that it's a it's still a little bit of a soft bait. Um, the bigger ones will aggressively hit this faster, so uh, you don't have to worry about the little peckers getting at it too much. But uh, definitely one of my favorite baits, all around baits for the uh, bridge snappers. Uh, put a nice chunk like that on there, drift it back, and then uh, it usually gets whacked pretty good. But it's a little it gets a little bit soft. Um, 
what I usually do when I cut the chunk and then I'll run the hook right across both sides of the skin so you have skin to skin and that makes it last a little bit longer. Then we've got two different things here. We've got uh, glass minnows and we've got pilchards. Now live these are great baits. The pilchards are fish candy in the Keys, probably number one bait in the Keys. Uh, glass minnows not so much because they're difficult to catch unless you have a uh, specific style cast neck li like I do the 3 16th mesh but these make great chum live pilchers are my favorite bait to use dead I don't really like using them too much um, the reason why is that they're a thin bait and they tend to when you freeze them they tend to dry out they dry out very quickly and they can become very crumbly they don't stay on the hook at all so I'll use a whole one or half one and if they're they're bigger ones are biting the whole ones then they'll work good but otherwise I'll use these both for chum just chunk up the pilchards or if I'll use them for is um, I'm prospecting I'll throw a couple of the large pilchards out so that they're easy to see as they drift down and usually the larger ones will be coming up and the smaller ones will peck at it but then you'll see a big one come up and grab it because it's a bigger bait so for prospecting it's good like that to just weed out the larger ones but uh, usually what I'll do is I'll go out to the back country, cast net a bunch of small pilchards and glass minnows, bag them up like this, and this is my chum for uh, just getting them started. Throwing out a few, throwing out a few, that gets all the, uh, the fish in that area, just like the chum does, but this kind of gets it more towards um, not so much of this uh, out there, just more prospecting. You, know, you want to feed them, get them feeding, but you don't want to overfeed them. So that's what these are good for. And then lastly, of course, is my favorite, which is the pinfish, okay? Now this is probably the mangrove snapper's bread and butter everyday food, whereas the rest of these are kind of like candies to them. Uh, the, especially like the shrimp and the uh, pilchards, the glass minnows, uh, they're kind of like a, a little sweet tooth for them, but the pinfish is kind of a, a main course meal that you'll find because they're popular in all these same locations, anywhere there's flats, anywhere there's grass, you're gonna find pinfish. And uh, love these as a, uh, a live bait fishing bridges because the small, um, the small snappers won't mess with them. They might nip at them, but these will get away from them. They've got the spines on them that'll keep the, the, the knowledgeable, uh, uh, snappers away to know that uh, they'll get a, uh, a sting if they mess with these but yet the big ones will whack these guys because they're not afraid they'll just take these guys down no problem hole and it weeds out those small ones for as a, as a fisherman and they're not only good live but they're also good cut bait for a bait like this size I just cut it at a diagonal like this that gets, uh, creates the oils and the blood gets out there in the scent, hook it up and then use it as like a cut bait. So I love pinfish, pinfish and grunts. But for me, I like, I'm not into just catching fish. I like targeting a little bit bigger. So I like to use the uh, larger pinfish. So I've got a, a couple of dozen I've caught. These are a little bit on the smaller sides. I'd rather get probably about that size or so. And that weeds out even the smalls and the, the medium smalls and then it sticks you with those 13 to 16 inch and bigger uh, snappers will down those holes. So I know if I get a bite on a, on a pinfish this big, it's gonna be something good and I'm in for a good fight. So anyways, those are the good baits there. One I didn't include cause I didn't, oh, I forgot about it. I probably have some in the freezer is a uh, mullet. Uh, mullet's pretty good, uh, easy bait to cast net. They freeze up okay. Um, but what I'll do is I'll do the same thing I do with ballyhoo is I'll, I'll stake them and just use chunks of them or I'll fillet them Take off the scales then I'll fillet them and then I'll just use strips as my bait um, But that's all pretty good solid bait there. You could buy all these things um, You can probably buy a bag of uh, glass minnows for about five bucks You can get probably a half done it half dozen um, ballyhoo for about five bucks Squid I got for three bucks for a pound. 
this eight ounce shrimp I got for uh, two nineteen, six bucks. Mesh one for four bucks. Um, live shrimp. Uh, actually, with the shrimp, when I use uh, shrimp for bonefish, I don't use this shrimp. I go to like Winn Dixie or Publix, and I get the uh, the shrimp that you would buy for food. You get the shell on headless ones in the uh, 40 to 50 size ones, the food grade ones, and I get a, a 12 ounce bag for about five bucks. And it's quality stuff, it doesn't smell, it's fresh, it's really nice. And then I just take a little mound of them when I go fishing and then I keep the rest of it at home in the freezer. Plus, if I'm hungry, I could use it for food. Um, live shrimp, they go for about uh, four bucks a dozen three to four bucks a dozen in a smaller size. Um, it's hard to get these larger ones like this right now, so they might be six bucks a dozen right now. But anyways, that's the bait size of it. Um, the next part of it will be hooks and weights and lines and stuff. About the uh, pinfish, is the reason also why I like to use them is that they have a, a very thick skin, a very strong skin, so it's difficult to uh, pull them off the hook, which makes them a great snapper bait, both live and cut. All right, once playing with it, messing with it, messing with it, messing with it. Staying down. Oh man, another jack. Big jack. Holy crap. Look at the size of that jack. Oh, look out. Oh, got tied up my line. Uh. No, no, no. No. Big Jack, come on. No. There we go, got him out. Man. I'm not gonna be able to get this guy out. Well, I have to get him all the way to the end of the bridge. I can't bring him in. It's too big. Come on, I'm walking my dog. Whoa, look out for that cable. Don't go by that cable. Stay out of that cable. Oh, look out for the cable. Look out for the rocks. from the rocks. Ah! Oh, yay for me! It's gonna kick out and I'm gonna lose this fish. Off the bridge. Nice. Nice fight. Okay, let's talk about um, hooks and weights. Uh, this is just one strategy, which is my most popular, which is doing the uh, knocker rig. And what a knocker rig is, is basically the hook on the end of the line with an egg sinker that just slides all the way down to the hook. 
So basically, the way the reason why I like the knocker rig is that one, as the weight gets down, there's no tension on the uh, hook and line. It could just free, so the bait can just free swim around. The bait, uh, the fish can grab the the bait and start taking off and never feel the weight. Versus if you have it tied onto your line, as soon as they feel that weight, they'll let go of it. So that's my most number one reason. The number two reason is that it makes it easier to cast because it stays butt up against the uh, the hook and the bait. So as it swings and you cast out, it all stays together, making it a lot easier to cast, especially under these bridges when you're basically rocking it from underhand and throwing it out, okay? Um, it's easier to control long tosses. When you have it pinned, you have a, a, a weight pinned or you're doing like a um, fish finder rig, this is can be free wheeling around, it can get all twisted up and all messed up, especially when you're losing live bait when you cast it or when it's just swimming around. So it's harder con to control there, okay? Now the third reason why is when you're fishing like bridges or structure, you have the ability to drop the bait and the weight and the hook right up against it and it'll drop it straight down. And then from there, the, the weight will be planted and then it'll, it'll allow it to just basically free swim around even though you're right next to that structure and depending on how much slack you give is how much that this line can have give. You could keep it pinned right to the to the weight and just have it taut on your uh, tension and that bait will be right here, give it a foot and then it could just swim around this much. But you're able to just drop it straight down right next to the structure versus if you have like a uh, fish finder rig, you drop it down, this swims around to the end and then all of a sudden you're all locked up and tied up and snagged. So it really allows you to control your baits wherever you're gonna drop it. And then let the, the, have that freedom to have no pressure on the line. So that's why I like doing the uh, knocker rig. Now for the knocker rig setup, um, my standard is I use basically egg sinkers is by far the best. Um, I have a one ounce, two ounce, no, this is like a half ounce, one ounce, two ounce, three ounce egg sinker, and it's all depending on the current. Um, what you're striving for is to use the least amount of weight that'll, that'll hold to the bottom, and that's the, the least amount of weight that required to hold to the bottom is the, the key what you're looking for. There's no reason to throw a big old three ounce when there's no current, and you can get away with a half ounce, okay? It's just a waste of it. Um, extra wheel uh, line to tie in. Eventually that fish is going to feel that weight when it gets out to a certain angle so the smaller the better there and plus these are a lot more expensive than like a half ounce there. So just just basically use just what you need. I usually use um, one of either the one or two ounce is what I'm stocked up with. That tends to be fine on the bridges. With the two ounce one I use sometimes maybe a three when I'm fishing reverse current when I'm trying to fish the outside underneath of the other bridge, but the current is coming towards me. So I need a weight that I could pitch underneath there and will lock down, even though that the, the current is coming back towards me. This will keep pin the bait and it'll stay in that hole where I want it to. Whereas you throw a half ounce or one ounce, that current will pull it right back and it'll take you out of your, uh, your fish zone. So that's basically whatever it takes to just pin it there. Um, now in regards to hooks, I use two different styles. I use a live bait hook and then I use a circle hook. Live bait hooks are good for snappers because that's what they do. They snap at your baits. They're a quick grab and they'll let go of it if they feel anything weird. Okay, so sometimes a light bait hook, something that as soon as you feel that bite, you could set the hook. It works really well for the snappers. Sometimes though, I'll use the uh, circle hooks, which my strategy for that is, is that I let them take the food, the bait, live bait, the dead bait, and swim. Give them like two or three seconds, even sometimes more, to just swim with it, to make sure they're not just grabbing onto the bait, but they've got the whole bait in their mouth, that they've partially swallowed it. Then I'll close that bail and just reel and get that uh, circle hook in the corner of their mouth. Um, same thing with the live bait hook. I could do the same thing, but with those, you end up gut hooking them because it's not the circle hook. So that's the trade-off. Now sizes wise, uh, during the day, sunny conditions, clear water, I'll go with the smaller circles. Like a live bait hook, I'll go to a number one. 
Now I usually don't go much smaller than that based on the fact that these are bigger sm snappers. They have a big mouth so they could take a big hook. Um, reason being I know because at nighttime and evenings I'll use a seven knot hook. But you want a big enough hook that you could hook the, you could set the hook in them because um, you're using a decent sized bait. But you also want to counteract that. You don't want to go too big because in the bright sunlight, they could see the hook, they could see your line, and you'll see the bigger ones come up to your bait, look at it, and then just dart off. They could see that hook. So you need to downsize where you get smaller and smaller where you could bury it in that hook, into that bait, but yet you could still get a good hook set on it. But I find a number one size live bait hook is about my everyday usual that I use for everything. And then at, as the evening progresses, the sun goes down, I can move up to a larger one, better hook set, bigger baits. Same thing during the day, I'll use a, I generally don't ever use much for anything, a smaller than like a three-aught circle hook, is because the fish I'm looking for, their jaws are gonna be bigger than this, and once you get a smaller hook, it's harder to set a circle hook in a bigger fish. Um, it needs to lock in the corner of their jaw, and when these bigger fish have a bigger, wider jaw, those smaller circle hooks just can't get into it and they'll just pull right out. So I usually start in the daytimes, I'll use like a three yacht, maybe a two yacht, but mainly a three yacht, sometimes a four yacht if I have a large uh, bait, live bait. And then in the evening, night times, I'll go up to a big seven knot circle hook because these are big snappers and you'll use a large pinfish and they could take it no problem. So, and that's the baits there. Uh, another trick I'll use is I use a good old uh, bucktail jig and either put on a live small pinfish or a, um, a strip bait, cut bait strip like a ballyhoo or whatever, a plug on the end of it. And this will allow me to do the same thing. I could pitch it and it'll sit right next to the, the edge there and I could work it right along this edge and bounce it and bounce it and bounce it and bounce it and get good spikes there. Um, the other way I'll do it is... Um, Oops. I'll use my yellowtail jigs for uh, drifting uh, back. They're basically a weighted hook, so they have a little bit of a weight. So I could drift baits back, cut baits, and then especially when I have the chum bag out, and then I could just drift the piece of chum back, or piece of bait back in the chum, just like you do for yellowtailing. Or I could put a ballyhoo chunk and just be able to do the same thing when there's not a lot of current and be able to just pitch it right by the edge and just let it sink slowly down there. Realistically, the larger snappers will be towards the bottom and the smaller ones will be the ones up feeding. So that's why a little bit of weighted will help. I'll occasionally just put a chunk on a, a bear hook and do it, but uh, it just all depends. So you have the ability bear hook on the top, a weighted yellowtail hook for that medium water column. You could use a, a bucktail jig to work the whole column down to the bottom or to use a knocker rig to just work the bottom specifically and that's my preference. So that's my general bait and rig setup there. All right, so I'm targeting right in that big kind of pool along the pillars there. That's where the, uh, there's a dip in the, the channel there. Oh, got one already. It's already taking it, letting it run messing with it. I want to kind of get away a little bit so I can get some angle. I'm going to set the hook here. Oh, did it let it go? No, still messing with it. Yeah, it's got it. There we go, set it. Nice snapper. Uh, and getting a few snappers too.